Six years ago, I woke up in the hospital. It was still dark outside. Two strangers are standing over my bed. I have committed no crime, I have hurt nobody, and I am forced to comply and go with them. They tell me that they're taking me to a program that my parents found for me. It was literally comply or die. So I live in the woods for three months straight. I'm covered in dirt, I'm starving, I'm dehydrated. This program is telling my parents I'm doing fantastic, and I'm trying to make it seem like I'm doing fantastic, because I'm like, get me the fuck out of here. After that, many survivors stepped up to share their stories with the hashtag ICUSurvivor. Daniel is just one of the 50,000 teens in the U.S. that are sent off to the USA's toughest boot camps, where they go through the most radical change possible. In this video, we're taking all the unfiltered experiences of the teens and bringing you the realities of a disturbing life inside the USA's tough boot camp for kids. Before we get started, let's get the differences out of the way. A boot camp is designed for behavior modifications. Just like the Army boot camps, they have the same elements of structure and discipline with a major focus on correction and therapy. The structure of a boot camp depends on factors like fees, length, size, structure, and more. But in a typical boot camp, the day starts way before dawn. The military wake-up call comes around 4.30 a.m., and they give you no chance to goof off or kick back. Even before breakfast, there's often a time of calisthenics, or even more difficult exercise. Some might have to do a five-mile run before breakfast. Oh, and they run the all-male and all-female boot camp separately. Unlike jail, the meals are ample and usually well-prepared. It has to be so that the kids can keep up with the demanding level of activity. These include physical training drills, manual labor education, vocational classes, group counseling, individual sessions on substance abuse or other treatments, and more. Now on paper, this all sounds great. But this is where all the PTSD and depression cases come from. In the 2007 report published by the United States GAO, there were pictures of the West Virginia woodlands, an Oregon river, and a Utah mountain range, which was the location of the boot camps. Here, the residents were not allowed to leave the camps and were forced into manual labor. They hiked through the wilderness, survived on rations, and were threatened with violence. According to some of the former students who wished to stay anonymous, they had their heads shaved against their will, given invasive medical examinations, and took part in so-called group humiliation exercises. One of the survivors of Provo Canyon, a troubled teen camp, was Paris Hilton, who shared from her experience that the students were, quote, restrained, hit, thrown into walls, strangled, and sexually abused regularly. Now, of course, we'll get into more details about these statements later. But either way, critics of these programs point out the lack of regulation for these businesses, citing abuse allegations as well as deaths that have taken place at such programs. But even so, parents continue to enroll their troubled teenagers in juvenile boot camps, and not many consider the repercussions that lie ahead. Let's take a look at some examples. In May 1990, a 15-year-old girl was enrolled in a nine-week wilderness program. And even though the program brochure claimed that the counselors were so-called highly trained survival experts, they did not recognize the signs of dehydration when she started complaining of blurred vision, stumbling, and vomiting. On the fifth day, and after nearly two days of serious symptoms, she collapsed and became unresponsive. According to the police documents, she lay dead in the dirt for 18 hours before the rescuers arrived because the counselors were not equipped with radios. In July of 2001, a 14-year-old boy who was enrolled in a boot camp became so dehydrated that he began to eat dirt from the desert ground. The program director saw him fall unconscious and have seizures. So he told the staff members to put the victim in the flatbed of a pickup truck and take him to a hotel. When they couldn't revive him, he was taken back to camp and placed in his sleeping bag. As the program director tried to assure his staff that, quote, everything will be okay, the boy passed away. In December of 2001, a 16-year-old female was climbing in an extremely dangerous area unsupervised by program staff. She slipped and fell about 50 feet into a crevasse and died of massive brain trauma about three weeks later. Investigations later uncovered that the program had numerous licensing and safety violations. 
In 2002, Erica attended the wilderness program in Nevada when she was 15 years old. On her first full day, she was pushed to keep hiking even though her condition got worse. Unfortunately, she fell off the trail into a bunch of bushes and rocks and did not receive medical help for almost an hour. Reports revealed that she died of heat stroke and dehydration. Her mother, Cynthia Clark Harvey, told BBC that her daughter was suffering from mental health problems at age 14 and her struggles led her to become suicidal. But they never knew it was going to be the tough camp's tough love that would eventually kill her. Cynthia later settled with the program for an undisclosed amount on the condition that they could speak freely about the circumstances of their daughter's death. In 2006, a 14-year-old boy named Martin Anderson attended the Panama City boot camp. One day, he got into an unusual ordeal with the guards. The video later revealed that because he was reluctant to take his tablets, there were seven guards kicking, punching, kneeing, choking, and slamming him while they jammed the tablets up his nose and covered his mouth. During this brutal takedown, the nurses just stood there and watched him slip in and out of consciousness. According to the attorney, quote, these heinous, malicious, and torturous treatments led to his death. The family was even offered to settle for $3 million, but the lawsuit filed by the family demanded more than $40 million in damages. Not a big ask, considering that the family of Brian Alexander settled on the same amount in 2003 after the 18-year-old boy died after two months in a boot camp. One victim that many are familiar with is Paris Hilton. They made me not trust anyone, not even my own family. She revealed that she'd already run away from many placements before she was taken to Provo Canyon in Utah and kept there for 12 months. In the documentary, This is Paris, she reunites with her classmate and goes public with their ongoing trauma from alleged experiences. That documentary has been watched almost 30 million times, and she has continued vocal advocacy since its release. Other celebrities like Paris Jackson and tattoo artist Kat Von D were inspired by the documentary to come forward. Even Danielle Brigoli spoke up and claimed that she was abused at the Turnaround Ranch in Utah. This was when the movement began against the so-called troubled teen industry, which targeted boarding schools, military-style boot camps, juvenile justice facilities, behavior modification programs, and other facilities. One woman, Amanda Householder, used TikTok to spread awareness of the allegations surrounding her parents' treatment of girls at a religious boarding ranch they were running in Missouri. Millions of people watched the video, and it led to the closure of the facility. Prosecutors filed more than 100 charges of physical and sexual abuse against Boyd and Stephanie Householder, Amanda's parents, which they denied. Paris Hilton stepped up and was part of a group that spoke at a hearing to convince lawmakers to introduce better protections in Utah, the state thought to have the largest amount of troubled teen facilities in the USA. Although there's an influx of desperate parents wanting to discipline their children, sending them to a USA boot camp will not be a viable option. The US government should have acted immediately after the 2007 GAO report, but it's been more than a decade and lawmakers are still struggling. Meanwhile, social media platforms are bringing people closer than ever and helping them unite under the Breaking Code Silence campaign. With advocates like Paris Hilton, Amanda Householder, and thousands of other survivors, there will either be a full closing of USA boot camps or reforms coming soon. Now, what do you think can be done to fix the menace inside the USA's boot camps? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.